Well, hi everyone, this is Bob the Science Guy. Now, for many of you that have followed my channels, you know that I'm a semi-retired physician and I'm returning to school to become a teacher in my retirement career. And since I have to do the homework anyhow, I thought that I would take some videos of the homework from my classes. So this is homework from University Physics Volume 1. Now, there's a college physics as well, which is very similar. Uh, the difference being is that college physics is primarily algebra and trigonometry and university physics is algebra, trigonometry, and calculus. This review should be suitable for both, and I do have both the uh, textbooks, and I'll be working with the folks at College Physics over at my school to make sure that I address some of their problems once in a while, too. And I'll also be hosting a Discord study group. Uh, we'll do that live, and the link to that will be in the description of this video. So please feel free to join me. Just pop on in if you'd like. Now, the way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to take a look at each chapter. And at the start of each chapter, I'm going to kind of have a look at the math involved and some of the math skills that you need to be successful with a chapter. Let's dive right in with chapter one, and we're going to start it off with looking at significant digits in scientific notation. Now, when we do pretty basic math, uh, we can get a ridiculous number of decimal places. So, for example, if you divide 1.25 by 3.0, we get this answer here. Now, the question becomes is how many of these decimal places actually are meaningful? Does this really matter to us? Well, the answer is no. So what we do is we go ahead and we do our math and we come up with our answer. However, we have to look at the number of significant digits in what we put in to determine how many we can trust on the way out. So for example, 1.25 has three significant digits. However, 3.0 only has two significant digits. So how many of these digits do you think that we should trust? Well, it's whatever is the lowest number. So our actual answer, if we were to report this out, would be 1.42, because we take that six and we round it up. Well, what are the rules? So for example, if you have a number like 25 that is to the left of a decimal place, that is a significant digit and that is a significant digit for two. However, if you have 2,500, that's a significant digit, and that is a significant digit. But these two right here, the zeros that are immediately to the left of the decimal place, don't count. So you still only have two significant digits. But what about this one? 2,501. Okay. Is this zero significant? Well, it is because that digit is significant and that digit is significant. So this is four. That's two. That's two. Now this is primarily because we can't really tell whether or not we measured accurately those last two zeros. We know the two and the five are okay, but what about the zero and the zero? Maybe we just had some sort of a ruler that only measured in increments of a thousand or a hundred. There's no way that we would be able to measure units in the ones and the tens. Now when it comes to the right of the decimal place, something is a little bit different. Well the implication is, is that if you put this digit here, that zero, it's significant. That has four significant digits, just like that one did, because the implication is, is that we could measure the difference with that one. And once again, if you have a significant digit on either side, like you have here, it's assumed that the zero between them is also significant. Now we have a nice way to take care of this, and that's called scientific notation. Let me show you how that works. So let's take our 2500 here. That would be 2.5 times 10 to the 3. So we take 2.5, we multiply it by 1000, we come up with 2500. Okay, that's significant, and so is that. Now, if we want to write this in scientific notation, we would write 2.501 times 10 to the 3. And again, you can immediately see that that has two significant digits and that has four. So when you report out significant digits, you have two types of numbers. You have a character, in this case the 5, and then you have something called the mantissa which is the numbers to the right of the decimal place. And no matter what the number is, you always want to report out a character and then a mantissa if necessary. And this works both above and below zero. 
So for example, if we have 1876, that would be reported out as 1.876 times 10 to the third. Now with 0 0.035, we have to move this decimal place one, two points to the right in order to get 3.5. So it's 3.5 times 10 to the negative two. We automatically know it's two significant digits and we know the magnitude. And we can report out any number we wish like this. Now, although it doesn't really strike me as being very necessary, we have special names for certain types of numbers. Now, while we can easily express anything that we need to express in scientific notation, there are certain things that we have to memorize. For example, a unit of length is a meter. One one thousandth, or one times 10 to the negative three of a meter is called a millimeter. The milli means it's one one thousandth of, of the unit, whatever it is you're looking at. And in the book, they have this nice little table that has all of these weird little numbers, although I have never yet seen anything uh, reported out as a yota kilogram or a yokto kilogram. But there are some that you will see rather frequently. One is pico, nano, or micro, and milli, and centi, and deci. You know, you will see these once in a while, so it's nice to at least know a few of them. But you will occasionally see these prefixes on exam just as a test of your ability to memorize things and really not much more. So with that said, that's pretty much all I wanted to cover in this video. We'll go on to the first part of the homework for chapter one in the next video. Take care.